thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this uh, presentation will bring in perspective uh, the development of a design tool, which is very much needed uh, for the analysis of concrete columns, uh, uh, its column, column sections and full columns for slenderness uh, effects reinforced with GFRP bars. I would like to acknowledge my uh, co-author, Dr. Aladdin Abu Layl uh, with Ada LLC, who is the uh, main uh, uh, software uh, uh, developer for, for this package. And we interacted together to, uh, uh, to develop this, uh, this package. Um, GFRP reinforced concrete applications has matured from being an emerging technology to a standard practice. The ACI 440.1 code is very close to being released. Uh, it has been balloted and uh, now it's going through TAC, uh, Technical Activities Committee uh, comments. The design tools are thus very much needed to guide the engineering work. And uh, uh, GFRP bars, it's very important to mention that GFRP bar prices are becoming comparable to steel bars at this point. So it is a prime time for, for GFRP to be introduced to practice. Uh, the objectives of this uh, talk is to develop a comprehensive analysis tool for concrete columns reinforced entirely with GFRP bars uh, longitudinally and transversely as a direct replacement of steel. And the tool has to cover all design aspects of the concrete columns reinforced with GFRP, which is quite different from uh, steel. Um, so the main, uh, the main two items are the design interaction diagrams uh, and uh, of the short columns, as well as the full consideration of the second order effects for slender columns in a sway and no sway uh, combination, as we will see uh, discussed here. So the two, the two items are considering the second order effect due to biaxial bending moments uh, in sway and no sway, combined sway and no sway mode or, or all sway or all non sway mode. Uh, noting that the moment magnification method of the code uh, for biaxial bending is not sufficient. Why? Because the, if you, when you take biaxial bending, the critical sections happen at different locations in the two directions, about the x-axis and about the y-axis. And the moment magnification method shifts everything to the ends. Uh, so when, when they don't coincide, they're not gonna be, they, they might be con uh, compoundingly conservative. Uh, so we need the rational way to uh, analyze them by using second order analysis or second order effects analysis. And this is left for a, a forthcoming presentation, hopefully uh, soon in the, uh, in the ACI convention. And the second one is the construction of the relationship between the angle of the applied moments. So MX versus MY. Uh, against the angle of the neutral axis gamma. When we have biaxial bending, it's gonna be an inclined uh, angle as we will see in the next slide. This uh, uh, axis, uh, the red axis uh, uh, shows the inclination of the uh, neutral axis orientation. So uh, the design pro in the design process that usually uh, we calculate the required reinforcement based on the applied moment. So we have MX and we have MY, we can get the angle alpha. And in the commentary section here, we show that tangent of alpha is MY over MX. That's the moment about the Y axis divided by the moment about the X axis. And for non-circular sections, biaxial bending moment is gonna introduce a new aspect to the problem, to the modeling problem, which is the angle of a neutral axis uh, gamma, it's unknown. And that angle in the commentary, if we look, we will see that the angle gamma is not directly equal or related to the, uh, to the angle alpha of the applied load. 
This is the neutral axis orientation, except for aspect ratio one, where alpha is equal to gamma, as we will see in the next slide, uh, or the following slide. Uh, the traditional way of analyzing calls for uh, doing uniaxial uh, bending in both directions, about the X and about the Y, and doing an interaction equation at a constant P with a certain power, given power constant, and that's approximate. Uh, so it gives an elliptical uh, curve. Uh, that's uh, when we slice the interaction diagram uh, along a specific uh, height or P value. We want to have more accurate because we are going for a software. We want very high reliability. So there we, we show the variation of the uh, angle alpha versus angle gamma. So for uh, aspect ratio of one, it's constant, uh, uh, 45 degree angle. But as we increase the aspect ratio, as you might expect, we're gonna have a nonlinear curve uh, there. So um, uh, the, problem, the problem that presents itself is for angles alpha greater than 30, we, we have an algorithm, so it's, there is nonlinear analysis uh, iterations uh, because we know the alpha, we don't know the gamma, we want to get the gamma uh, for that's corresponding to a certain alpha. So you, you can see that there's a plateau here, there's a slight variation uh, of the gamma as we, with big jumps in alpha, and the computational uh, algorithm is going to be very expensive. So uh, we, we're going to iterate a lot for small changes in gamma, and uh, it's going to make the software very slow. So the purpose here is to, um, uh, is to come up with a way to handle this very efficiently in the, uh, in the program. So what we did is we found a resemblance between what is called the ramberg osgood equation, which is typically used for uh, to model nonlinear relationship between stress and strain in metals. Uh, that's this equation. Uh, and we borrowed that to uh, match the uh, variation and, and come up with a, an accurate, very accurate, yet uh, efficient software uh, uh, algorithm tool uh, to, to calculate these relationships and thus build efficiently and quickly the interaction diagram. So alpha is calculated in terms of gamma. There are three parameters, K, E, and N. One of these parameters, K, uh, is gonna be determined from a boundary condition. So that's at an angle of 90, because at zero, if we put zero alpha and zero uh, gamma is gonna be zero, right here, so it's not, we're not gonna get much information, but if we put a 90 degree, we're gonna get solve for K for one of the variables. And then we have two more variables, we selected K, so we have E and N to come up with. And what we did is we solved the expensive uh, algorithm to come up with all the numbers along this curve. And then we, uh, we came up with uh, curve fitting, which was uh, almost perfect, R squared of one and 0.9999, as we will show in the next slide. Uh, so that gave us an expression of E um, in, terms of, uh, in terms of H over B ratio for every reinforcement ratio that we have in the uh, in the curve, and because we have a program, the family of curves will be embedded there and the same way with the N versus the H over B ratio. Uh, so the, the technique is as follows, for a given H over B ratio, we're, and MX and MY, we're gonna calculate the alpha as the tan inverse of MY over MX. And then we're gonna get the E, the N, and we have the K. So we're gonna get the gamma that's corresponding to that uh, very efficiently without needing to iterate until we get a gamma that matches the alpha for, for, the, uh, for the column that we are trying to solve for. 
So thus we have all the strain distributions, the stress distributions and so forth. As, uh, as far as results and discussions, we looked up the literature for solved problems that we can compare the software with. And we found uh, one problem in the book by Nani et al, 2021. Uh, it's a uniaxial and, uh, a problem. So uh, it, whatever we discussed so far doesn't uh, apply here because it's straightforward. But in the next slide, we're kind of going to compare a biaxial with a uniaxial curve. So as you will see, there is the orange curve, which is our present and present analysis, as well uh, uh, as compared to Nani's uh, curve, which is the blue curve for uh, his calculation. The reason for this small discrepancy in here is Nani used the uh, the standard ACI 0.85 alpha and beta, which is based on the F prime C, whereas uh, we use the actual alpha and beta based on Hagenstadt parabola. So we, 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 have, uh, we have the numerical values for there and there are the parameters of that uh, problem. Uh, so, so his is a little bit more conservative than, uh, than the actual case. Uh, then we compared zero degree uniaxial curve uh, with a 45 uh, degree curve. And uh, we showed that uh, the, the curve is in, in, inwards for the 45 degree angle as uh, compared to the, to the uniaxial uh, curve. Uh, as far as the software development, we have an interface that uh, calls for uh, uh, units, cross sections, rectangular, circular, barred identifier by diameter or by numbers. Uh, we have geometry, we have material, we have loads and we have analysis and we have report whereby in the report, you push this button and you get a comprehensive report of all the input parameters, all the equations that are included in the calculations as well as all the results that are, uh, that are there. So it helps the engineer uh, deal with this new type of reinforcement. Uh, the second, this slide talks about geometry. So we have cross section, uh, width height, uh, cover, uh, longitudinal FRP, uh, how many bars we have, the bar diameter, the transverse bar diameter. And uh, we have the material, concrete, longitudinal FRP, transverse FRP, all the parameters that we need to uh, calculate uh, things with as far as mechanics, as well as the loads. And the loads are all the loads that are in ACI 318.19 uh, with their combinations, as well as sway and no sway for slender columns that we can select and with the parameters that uh, follow that, like K, the effective length and the un. Uh, uh, supported length of the column. So this is an example of a column that uh, has uh, in red the unconfined curve and in green the design curve after applying the fee factors, which are different in the case of FRP than in the case of steel, because in steel you have 0.9 and you have 0.65, but in, in FRP you have point. Uh, 65 and 0.55 fee factors. Uh, so, and then we have the comprehensive report. Of course, there's no room to show the entire thing, but uh, uh, once we publish that on our website, uh, you, can, uh, you can actually look it up. Uh, it's, uh, it has a comprehensive table of contents of all the, the emotions from input to calculations and equations all the way to, uh, to uh, results. So in conclusion, an accurate relationship between the angle of the applied moments alpha and the neutral axis uh, angle gamma uh, is constructed for rectangular columns. Of course, in circular columns is straightforward. That's why I didn't talk about it because any biaxial bending will translate into a uniaxial bending. Uh, the constructed technique is applicable for FRP, steel, stainless steel, any, any type of reinforcement that you have. And uh, a similar approach 
uh, will be used for uh, analyzing elliptical columns, which is the next step that we're going to have uh, according to the ratio of the major axis to the minor axis in geometry. And a comprehensive software is uh, almost fully developed to design and analyze concrete columns reinforced with FRP bars as direct replacement of steel based on the new code that is under balloting. So by the time the code is out, we are, uh, we are ready to, uh, to analyze. And the developed software considers second order effects due to biaxial moments in, in, in a rational way uh, uh, for sway, no sway combinations uh, as, as you might, uh, as you might uh, need to, to have. Uh, at the end, I would like to acknowledge the sponsor of this uh, software, which is a group in Australia that's affiliated with the manufacturer, the Canadian manufacturer of FRP, which is Tough Bar. So I, I would like to give them an acknowledgement at the end. And with that, uh, I am done and I will open it up for questions. All right. Thank you, Dr. Rashid, for your presentation.